Hi there, this is Jonathan Ginsberg. I'm a consumer bankruptcy attorney here in the Atlanta, Georgia area. And I want to talk to you today about how to negotiate with a bill collector over the phone uh, when you're dealing with a delinquent debt. And I'll tell you, I, I kind of hesitated to make this video because generally I'm not a big fan of people talking to bill collectors. I prefer to do the talking myself. And the main reason is that when you're talking to a bill collector, you probably will feel somewhat intimidated. The bill collectors use a lot of psychology to try to make you feel guilty or that you're a bad person. And it's difficult when you're talking about a debt that you owe. Uh, and again, some people are better at this than others, but I just wanted to give you some, some thoughts about how to approach it. Uh, of course, the main overriding thing to remember is if you're dealing with a bill collector and you don't want to talk to him or her, you don't have to. Uh, there's a federal law called the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, which says that you can tell that bill collector just to go away, to leave you alone, and they can't call you anymore. And of course, the other thing is you can always contact an attorney like me uh, to assist you in negotiating with the bill collector, and that may be the best solution of all. But if you choose to deal with it yourself, here's some things to keep in mind. First of all, uh, remember that you have leverage. And what I mean by that is the bill collector is trying to get money. Um, generally, bill collectors get paid on a commission. So if you don't pay them, they don't get paid. So you have leverage in that you potentially have money. They don't have it. Uh, and the only way for them to get it would be to sue you. They would have to file a lawsuit, wait at least 30 days. If, if you don't answer, if you do answer, it's going to put a three or four month uh, delay in it. Uh, so they don't want to litigate these type of things. I'd rather work something out with you. But of course, they're not going to tell you that. They're going to make it seem like you have to move very quickly to deal with them when in fact you don't. Again, worst, situ worst case situation, they sue you. You have plenty of time to deal with it. So you have leverage over them. And just keep that in mind. That, and there's nothing that has to happen very quickly. They're going to tell you, you need to make a decision right now. You need to uh, settle this thing within the next week or the deal goes away. That's that's a bunch of garbage. The deal's not going to go away. In fact, the longer you wait, generally the better deal you're going to get. So um, really don't believe anything they tell you. And that's really the second point, I guess, is that anything a bill collector tells you is most likely going to be bogus. Um, they're not under any obligation to tell you the truth. Most of the time, they will not tell you the truth. They are not attorneys. They clearly do not have your best interest at heart. So assume that anything a bill collector tells you in terms of deadlines, in terms of what the law is, in terms of you know what can happen to you, just don't buy it. It's just probably not true. If you want real advice, call an attorney uh, who's going to assist you, who's looking out for you, and you'll get real advice about what, what in theory, a, a bill collector can do. But don't believe anything a bill collector can tell you and that anything they do try to do to pressure you, again, is just it's just an attempt to squeeze money out of you. Um, I think the other thing I would also tell you, number three, would be anything you negotiate really should be done in writing. I'm not a big fan of telephone negotiations because it becomes a he said, said, she said. So if the bill collector is trying to pressure you, say, look, will you fax me this? Will you mail it to me? I, will t I want my lawyer to take a look at it. Um, if they're not willing to put it in writing, then it doesn't exist. Uh, I remember a contracts professor told me when at one point in law school, you know, an oral contract is worth the paper it's written on, meaning it's not worth anything. So if they're trying to pressure you to do something over the phone, uh, it's no good. Specifically, do not ever, ever give somebody access to your checking account verbally. They're, they'll try to get you to do a verbal check, a verbal access to your credit, uh, to your checking account. Never, ever, ever do that. And one of the main reasons you don't want to do that is if this debt is in fact a stale debt, which sometimes they are, meaning that it's old and it really cannot be legally collected on, if you make a payment, you, you risk reviving a stale debt. So if you have a debt that is beyond the statute of limitations, you can tell them to jump in a lake. If you pay on it, you may revive the statute of limitations and that debt becomes viable again. So you never, ever want to do that. And in fact, you know, another point here is you have the right under the Fair Debt Collections Practices Act to ask for verification of the debt. So you can say to them, look, I don't think I owe this debt. You need to prove it to me. And if they tell you they can't do it or they won't do it, say, hey, the FDCPA says you have to. And I want to know, I want to see proof that you have the debt, that you, that you that I actually owe this debt. Um, number six is never admit to anything. You may owe the debt completely. Never admit it. Always talk on the hypothetical. If I owed this debt, what would it take for you to go away? 
Um, how much would you need if I owe this debt? Do not ever admit that you owe the, that you owe the debt. There's a good chance you're going to be recorded. Even if you don't give permission, they may still record you. So always talk in the hypothetical. Never acknowledge that you owe the debt. Never admit anything. Again, if they say, do you agree you owe this debt? I'm not agreeing to anything. I'm simply talking to you as a matter of business. You know, how do we negotiate this? If I owe this debt, how does it go away? And again, that's the way you have to approach this. This is business. This is not a moral failing on your part. This is not, uh, you've not done anything wrong. This is not criminal. This is a business debt. So if I'm talking to a creditor about a client's debt, the way I approach it is, if my client owes this debt, how would we make this go away? We're not acknowledging that he owes the debt, but if he does, how would we make this go away? And that's the way you need to approach this. This is, again, a business matter. This is not something you want to rush into. You don't want to give any uh, access to your, to your checking account. You don't want to do anything. You want to see it in writing. You have a right to say, I want my attorney to look at it. And if they try to pressure you, you say, look, I don't feel comfortable you're pressuring me. I'm going to talk to my attorney and hang up or I want to assert my rights under the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act and hang up. They may threaten you with this. They may threaten you with that. You're not going to jail. Worst comes to worst, they sue you. That's going to give you plenty of time to deal with it. So again, you have a lot more leverage than you think, and do not let a bill collector intimidate you or threaten you. You can always call an attorney. And the last and final point is that if you want somebody on your side you know, pick up the phone, call my office, call a bankruptcy attorney. Uh, we can help you. We can tell you what's the truth as it applies to you. Nothing the bill collectors say is likely to be truthful. It's just the way it is, uh, the way our system works. It's unfortunate, but that's the way it is. Um, and again, you have to take control. You've got to be your own advocate, but don't believe anything these people tell you. They are trained to try to extract money from you. They don't care about other debts. They don't care about child support, taxes, anything like that. They don't care that their debt may be stale, that their debt may come in you know, second place behind tax debt or child support. They're just going to try to give you, try to get you to give them access to uh, your checking account or to write post-dated checks. You don't want to do any of that. You only want to make a, a debt settlement on terms that are most favorable to you. So if you keep those things in mind, you'll have a much better shot at working out a good deal. And again, last and, and I'll repeat it again, only do it in writing and let an attorney, let somebody take a look at it before you sign off on anything. So hope this has been helpful. And again, um, if you have any questions, please pick up the phone and call my office. Be happy to chat with you about this. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube, like it on Facebook, and reach out to me if I can be of help. Thanks a lot.